Welcome to the patio and welcome to another episode of Blooms for You. Oh my goodness, how I have missed doing these videos. It seems as though it has been like forever since I put out an edition of Blooms for You, but these videos take quite some time to compile, edit, etc., and it's been far too cold to sit at my desk. I don't want to rush these videos when I'm editing. Meanwhile, I don't want to rush any videos while I'm editing, but wow, yes, these take a little bit more effort. If you're new to the channel since the last video aired, welcome. It's good to have you as well. If you're here for the first time, please consider subscribing because what happens in my blooms for you series is that I showcase my orchids that are in bloom or have bloomed give a little bit of information update etc we take a little closer look at the blooms but most importantly I get to dedicate blooms to you who have subscribed who have commented if I can identify you you go on a list and then, as and when orchids come into bloom, I go to that list, I check which names are up, and presto, I get to dedicate those blooms then to the persons whose name has come up. So, if you have not subscribed, please consider doing so. If you're on a private account, I respect your privacy, and I wouldn't want to jeopardize that, but then also know I cannot see you. So if you are subscribed, you haven't commented yet, you're on a private account, leave a comment, then I can see your name and then you will go on the list as well. These videos also give me an opportunity to honor and thank all the Orchid Ninjas. Your support is super appreciated, as well as the vote of confidence that you're giving my channel by being so supportive on a monthly basis. If you would like to become an Orchid Ninja, for example, and you're not subscribed, you won't see the join button. So what YouTube has changed in the last four or five months is that you have to subscribe in order for the join button to appear. So if you would like to join and become an Orchid Ninja, you will get a regular shout out because videos like these should be happening much, much quicker than I've been doing in the past. I think that now the evenings are coming to a temperature level that I can tolerate where my phalanges do not feel as though they're icicles. So a big shout out to all the Orchid Ninjas. I hope that you're doing well. Thank you for being here. Thank you for everything that you do for the channel. Thank you for the motivation, the support and encouragement you give me as well. Love you guys to bits. Now, I know this introduction is a little bit longer than it normally is, but I have to say something, and that is important. We are going back in time. We are going down memory lane because a lot of orchids have bloomed, and there is no way I'm wasting the blooms and not dedicating them and doing a reset and then moving on with orchids that are in bloom right now. So many of the videos that are going to be coming up about blooms for you will feature orchids that are not in bloom anymore. They have bloomed and they have been dedicated. And I do want to make sure that we do not miss out on some of the majestic and gorgeous blooms we've had while the weather was nothing short of horrible. With all that being said, no more jibber jabber. Let's check out what has been in bloom and whose names have come up. Small things come in big packages and that is so true for my Tulumnia Red Devil. That is her name. That has nothing to do with any correlation who these blooms are dedicated to. See Studio King. I have a little packet of dynamite here that is a Tulumnia Red Devil. She blooms for you. Two blooms is what I could get out of her during adverse conditions. But oh my, what a fighter she is. I took my eyes off the ball and in 2022, there was a scale infestation amongst my Tolumnias. This one, I thought I had lost already back in 2018, 2019. Finally, she bloomed for us in 2022 and it was actually my red devil that I wanted so badly for many reasons, which I will explain just now. And I thought after the scale infestation, for sure I had lost red devil again, but nope, she is doing fabulously. Not only did she bring these two blooms that mean so much to me, they are precious and beautiful, but she's also growing a stonking new fan during conditions that are definitely not to her liking. But look at that fan. I am so happy to see this. And the root system. Little bit of dynamite I've got here. She is incredible. She bounced back fabulously, even though there is a little bit of scar tissue left from the scale. But my 
goodness, the rest is just looking amazing. I am so encouraged for what this orchid is going to do in the future. Meanwhile, for the time being, she's at eye level every day. All my Tolumnias are and they get a once over, a real good, close, hard look to see if any scale is trying to manifest itself. But we're doing well. Tulumia Red Devil is doing well. And see Studio King, she blooms for you with these beautiful velvety textured blooms that absorb the sun and reflect it in such a beautiful, rich, silky way. I love it. But not just that, when you look at the back of the bloom, there's an additional feature, a curling up kind of a structure that forms the back of the lip. Good things come in small packages and that's why I call her dynamite because she's just exploding and doing so so well. <laughs> anyway that's me and my Tolumnia Red Devil C Studio King. I am so thrilled to be able to dedicate these blooms to you to say a massive thank you for your support on my channel. I hope that if when you see this clip that you are actually into Tolumnias and if not maybe it's just a question of not yet but maybe after Tolumnia your red devil well you never know i see you i appreciate you thank you for being here my wonderful impressive blooming i would say that is pretty impressive from an orchid that has been through quite a lot in 2022 this is dendrobium nafert alex poli but i have five spikes one spike has yet to open, however, I am not going to wait much longer because the other spikes have been open quite some time, starting maybe five weeks ago with the first spike, so I don't want to get into the process of the blooms aging, even though one spike has yet to open. But I want to dedicate this blooming and these blooms to Trish Smith, Paul Costa Ferrer, Rene Tracy, Chandra's Creation, Catherine Gonzalez Corniel. My Crazy Life, Jeet Mukherjee, Michael Ian Marshall, Rhonda Brown, and Sante Volhuta for your support on my channel. That is what this is obviously all about. These blooms are for you to say thank you so, so much for being here, for supporting me, and for watching the videos, helping the channel grow. I appreciate your time and your trust in my content. <laughs> So I was mentioning earlier on, despite what this orchid has been through, because my Nafritz Alex Pauli did grow two gorgeous new growths. One of them is blooming. The other one that is looking a little bit yellow, you will probably think, yeah, that's not looking right. And you're absolutely right because I had some thrips issues. The fact that the leaves are still holding on, that's testament to the strength and the robustness of the orchid, not because I did anything. I managed to catch them in time, but I have a feeling those leaves are going to be dropping off at some point in time, leaving me with an empty pseudobulb that will behave and act as the storage organ that it is, including its root systems in the pot. I had no idea, to be honest with you, my summer of 2022 went by super fast. I had no idea how big the growths were already when I started recognizing that this orchid needed a lot more fertilizer than I was giving it. For that reason, there are some nutrient deficiencies to be seen because everything was directed towards the growing points. I hope to be able to do right by this orchid in future because the next new growth is already starting. Oh, I love it. Anyway, I can't get very much closer than this if I want to show the whole orchid. Even though she fits quite nicely on my shelf in the indoor grow space, she is rather big. But I have had the best time ever photographing these blooms, documenting the buds, the funkiness of all the things that are going on, also the gnarliness. You know, sometimes these beautiful dendrobiums have all the interest on the back sides of the petals and sepals, and not much goes on at the front. Only the markings show through as shadows from the back to the front. Not with this orchid. Even the peduncles are incredible. There's also interest going on there. There's a fuzziness, a wartiness, a hairiness about it. But oh my goodness, what I see is a little bit more of a light yellow, baby yellow heading towards chartreuse green when their blooms are fresh. 
and then bit by bit they get more and more into the pale yellow and all the markings turn more burgundy deeper as the blooms start to fade but the longevity of these blooms is astounding this orchid loves the camera absolutely it is not difficult to photograph these blooms i was surprised how everything came out crisp clear and you can see the detail whereas sometimes blooms are super difficult to photograph and document when there is so much interest going on you don't know what the eye is going to pick up and what the eye is going to feel like it's far too much all in one image not with this one i had a great time following its progress and always with trish smith Pau costa ferreira rene tracy chandra's creation catherine gonzalez corniel my crazy life jeet mukaji michael ian marshall Rhonda brown and sante volhuter in mind so for all of you as a massive thank you for your support on my channel my dendrobium nafritz alex poli blooms for you even though one spike has yet to open i do not trust the conditions the timing the light etc 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 during these winter months a massive muchas gracias from spain to all of you not only is my tolumnia brown spot enjoying this beautiful sunshine oh my goodness we're in january the orchids are outside which is such a special treat i cannot tell you but my tolumnia brown spot is also enjoying the sunshine just for a little bit while i film and dedicate the two spikes with all the blooms on it to johnny boriana raneva eileen mayu barga adina and pai fai even on a cloudy day, this orchid is so much fun. And yes, I have to bring my tolumnias inside for the colder nights that we have, probably all the way up until April, maybe May, depending. And at night, she lives on a tray on the sofa, very close to me. <laughs> so I even see her in the candlelight. She glows so, so beautifully. But before I forget, the names I've just mentioned, these bloom for you. You see, I'm getting carried away. To say thank you to all of you for your support, on my channel <laughs> i can tell you when it's sunny my mind just goes poof <laughs> and i'm like blooms 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 sunshine sunshine warmth and i completely lose track of what i'm supposed to be doing here <laughs> thank you to all of you so much for your support on my channel you're so appreciated now i hope that you like tolumnias but i wanted to not only show you the blooms talk about the blooms if there is anything to talk about i think the visual pretty much says it all but first of all she is not fragrant i don't know of a tolumnia that is fragrant unless it is a species which i do have and i'm hoping that that tolumnia is going to grow better and bloom for us better in the year of 2023 but considering how much spotting she has everywhere her name is singular brown spot and I just thought, well, that's interesting. But look at the back of the bloom. On the lip, there is a single brown spot. Now, I don't know if anybody was that mindful to pick up on that. And that is why she's called brown spot, not brown spots. Even though she's got so many when you look at her from the front. Oh, but I think that little spot in the back, if nobody thought of it, to me, it makes perfect sense that she is brown spot. Thankfully, this is one of my stronger tolumnias, even though she's showing little bit of stress symptoms because of the conditions she has to endure. There's a little bit of shriveling on the leaves, but it is the back fan. You can also see that one of the leaves is very paper thin. That is still from the scale infestation, a result of that. There are some leaves that look like they have leaf tip dieback. That is because of cold, because Dum Dum here was finishing a live stream went to sit on the sofa to unwind and the tolumnia tray was empty and i cannot tell you how quickly i snapped out of my stupor as in time to wind down i went outside and quickly picked up all my tolumnias and put them on the tray but <laughs> yeah the temperatures were a little bit colder that night not good not good at all thankfully though she did bloom out for us thankfully only one bud blasted 
But even though we know telumnias have the tendency to branch and she could be doing this all the way into early spring, I am going to be cutting these spikes off because the plant for me is more important, but I had to dedicate them to Johnny Boriana Raneva, Eileen Mayu, Varga Adina, and Pai Fai before I cut them off, obviously. I'm sure that they're going to give me some more joy on my desk in a little vase and then, well, we hope for the next new growth and that she survives the coming onslaught of colder weather until we see these blooms again, fingers crossed. So thank you to all of you, Johnny Boriana Raneva, Eileen Mayo, Varga Adina and Pai Fai for your support on my channel. I hope you're doing well in your part of the world. Thank you so much for your support. She is pretty and she's blooming her head off and she is just, ooh, making my days here during the winter in southern Spain so much brighter. This is Dendrobium lutein blanc. But before I get ahead of myself, let me just say who she's blooming for as a massive thank you for your support on my channel. So that would be Jessenia Luna, Joy Jackson, Alejandro M, Lisa Foster, Katessa, Paris Muleman, Wanda Shaw, Denise Weintraub, Ivona Manitius, Christiane Pichelmeier, and Diliani Nedelcheva. So, to all of you, as I briefly said right before I mentioned your names, thank you so very, very much for your massive support on my channel. I have to say that, yes, <laughs> as I also mentioned, she is brightening up my day with her blooms and her gorgeous fragrance. Dendrobium Lutein Blanc does not disappoint. So let's just address the fragrance before we go and geek out over the interesting blooms as such and even the buds themselves. Right, she smells like burnt molasses. Very sweet, very heavy, but not potent to the point of being unpleasant. There's an aroma in the air even when the sun doesn't shine, but of course when the sun shines on her it amplifies and magnifies that fragrance to quite an extent. However, it is not unpleasant that you want to leave the room or open a window. It's just a beautiful little perfume. The closer you get to the orchid, the more intense it becomes, of course, and the more the burnt note of molasses, burnt sugar comes into effect. Now, I do like burnt sugar. I like this fragrance, but you stay away from her, all you get is heavy molasses. It's delicious to say the least. Pancakes, anyone, is all I can say. <laughs> Not the syrup sweet, the molasses sweet that isn't too overpowering, but yeah, absolutely gorgeous. And hey, she was one of the first orchids that I grew from a teeny tiny seedling into blooming size. So she's always got a little special place in my heart. And being a Latoria type dendrobium, she is a hybrid. I do love the funky pseudobulbs. I love her growth habit as she comes up. Her sheaths are bright red. It is just amazing. So much interest in the plant itself, even when not in bloom. My setup is a semi-hydro classic setup, but all she is sat in is lava rock. So it works. It's doing great. I've had to repot her only once, only because I wanted the pot for another orchid. Otherwise, she could have stayed in that pot much, much longer. So I bumped her up a size, it wasn't necessary, but here we are at least for the next, what, maybe five years, she can just stay in this pot and take over. Her root system is extremely generous, so I am pleased to say that this orchid can stay in an inorganic media setup indefinitely until the pot cracks or let's just say, yeah, it starts to look a little bit unsightly. One of those reasons will be my next reason for taking her out of the pot, but until then, it is just lovely to be able to leave an orchid alone. <laughs> Anywho, as you have been seeing in some of the images, oh my goodness, the interest of the bloom just goes on and on and on. If the growth habit is not something that you really, really aspire to as a plant that is not in bloom, something that you don't find attractive to look at, oh, when the blooms come, it takes forever for the spikes to develop, but the excitement, the anticipation makes up for that wait. Because 
you've got so much interest just on the buds alone. They are funky, they are gnarly, and if you happen to see a little bit of hair or a little bit of dust, forgive me, I don't want to handle my blooms too much, and with all the little weird things, protrusions coming out of the buds, they will pick up on something that is flying through the air very, very quickly and it will stick. Not because of happy sap, but because the texture of the buds that are the petals and sepals still close, they are really rough and they're like little tiny warts on them. Totally bizarre, super interesting, and never mind the spotting. I love spotted blooms, and usually you would think, well, it's the petals and sepals from the front that you think with the spotting, etc. And yes, this bloom from the front has a lot of spotting, but when you turn it around, check out the spike from behind. <laughs> it really is a 360 degree magical experience. These blooms are amazing and it doesn't even end there. Not only are they fragrant, but they bloom at a time of year where oh, a little pick-me-up is always so, so welcome. And it is January as I'm filming this clip. That little pick-me-up can last a very, very long time. Just as long as the spikes develop to get to bloom, the blooms will also last at least two months, if not more. Now, that for me is a winter bloomer that I can live with, especially seeing as she's not that demanding. The next new growths have already matured. The blooms that we see now are on spikes from last year's growth. So any new growth on this orchid, the blooming will come in the following season with other mature growths already growing and yeah, that's the cycle. Just incredible. A charming, compact little orchid that, oh, even in my limited space during the winter, yeah, we've got room for one of those. So I am super pleased to dedicate and say thank you once again to Janessia Luna, Joy Jackson, Alejandro M., Lisa Foster, Katessa, Paris Muhlemann, Wanda Shaw, Denise Weintraub, Ivona Manitius, Christiane Pichelmeier, and Diliani Nedelcheva to say thank you to you for your support on my channel. This charming, amazing, uplifting orchid, Dendrobium lutein blanc, with her beautiful bloom spectacle, she blooms for you. I have to tell you that it is wonderful sometimes to reminisce. Normally I like to have my blooms either bloomed out within a week or 10 days or in bloom when a blooms for you dedication video airs. But I will admit that this memory lane also has a certain feeling of gratitude considering what my orchids have to deal with during the winter months. And then we see what actually has bloomed. Instead of just thinking of doom and gloom, think of bloom and bloom. <laughs> Note to self for future winters. <laughs> I appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the blooms. If you have any questions or want to know any further details about the orchids featured today, let me know in the comments or just say hi. Love, love hearing from you. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.